Privet Nui Druzi. Welcome, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. I have done daily updates since about day 85. In recent days, I shifted gears and I started just talking about some bigger picture items. Today, I'm kind of going back a little bit to my old tricks. I'm not trying to cover everything exhaustively, but I saw this one article and then I thought, you know, it's been a long time since I've done fun with Russian state media. So that's what we're doing today. So I want to start with this article that I saw in the Independent Russian MP. This was about a week ago. Russian MP who hung noodles on his ears during Putin's speech faces punishment. What are we talking about? Hanging noodles on your ears. Yeah, he faces punishment. The party is confirmed. The idiom, it turns out, to hang noodles from someone's ears dictates that someone is lying with the phrase, don't hang noodles on my ears, meaning don't fool me or don't lie to me. Now, I'd never heard this before, so I had to look it up. And sure enough, it means to mislead lead or fool me, used especially in negative imperative constructions. Okay, who knew? So, here's what we know. This is the lawmaker, and he's now facing charges for hanging this on his ears while he's watching Putin's speech, and he made the photo available. So I thought we'd have some fun with Russian state media. So here's the first article, and we're just going to look at the title of it. The Pentagon is well aware of Ukraine's corruption problem. But you know what? I was watching and paying attention that day, and this is Colin Cahill addressing the House Armed Services Committee, and what he actually said was, we can't find any instances of corruption where our weapons have been diverted somewhere. That's what he actually said. So RT, this is for you. Now, Putin condemns Ukraine of a terrorist attack. Now, that's interesting. Uh, anytime that Ukraine does anything to Russia, it's a terrorist attack. Anytime that Russia does anything to Ukraine, it's a special military operation. But let's set this aside. There are some interesting circumstances here, and I'm going to let Denis Davdov talk about it here. Last day, there was some sort of the interesting event happened in the bordering Russian area, Bransk Oblast. At first, it was reported by the Russian media that Ukrainian soldiers went to the Bransk Oblast, the Russian Federation, and got some sort of the hostages. They've shot the school bus, killing the driver and wounded one of the kids. Moreover, they say that the kid, who is the boy, was delivered to the hospital and the American bullet was taken out from his lungs. But you know what? The boy's mother say that he didn't get any kind of the wounds from any of the bullets. I mean, this is kind of a good look. But the Russian officials already spread the story around their media. So what? Okay, so... That goes back to this terrorist attack, and Mr. Putin is, well, not telling the truth again. It's, I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes he doesn't tell the truth. Mr. Putin, I have more if you'd like to borrow some. Here is our friend, Mr. Bergosian, who talks about how uh, Wagner uh, is uh, closing in on Bakhmut and the pincers are closing shut, announced Bergosian. Well, they have gained ground around Bakhmut. The Ukrainians have defended it, and they have reinforced it. But you can see where they've gained ground. But if I had a dollar for every time that they declared victory in Bakhmud, I'd be a rich man by now. They've been after this for six, seven, maybe even eight months. Noodles. Noodles. Now, this was fascinating. Russia scolds the West over a Ukrainian grain deal. Well, why are they scolding the West over a Ukrainian grain deal? Well, they're saying that all the Ukrainian grain isn't going to help poor countries. It's going almost exclusively to Europe, and that's just not exactly true. But what is true is that it's not that Ukraine is the problem. The Russians are actually talking about pulling out of the grain deal. Here's the Guardian. Russia would only agree to extend the Black Sea grain deal if the interests of its agricultural producers were taken into account, Russian's foreign ministry had said. The deal brokered by the UN and Turkey allows safe exports from Ukrainian ports and it's up for renewal this month. And so the Russians are now talking about how they may pull out of the grain deal. And the foreign ministry also has noodles on their ears. Another fun one, ex-Russian president, Mr. Medyev, said, names the red line for a direct war with NATO. Well, he's named a number of red lines before, but this red line, well, I'll just read it for you. He warned that the U.S. and its allies, that they can be treated as parties to the conflict if, in addition to supplying weapons, they train personnel to operate them, citing legal presidents from the early 20th century. Well, what he's trying to do 
is deter the U.S. from doing what they're doing, which shows that the U.S. and Western allies are doing the right thing. But Medvedev is not really believing that this is a red line that's going to cause a war with Russia. He's just lying. For Mr. Medvedev, there's not enough pasta in the world for the noodles that would go on his ears. Okay, at the G20 over the last few days, the West is turning the G20 into a circus, according to Sergei Lavrov, who also lies regularly. Why? Western officials have accused Russia of launching a, quote, unprovoked attack on Ukraine. So you went into Ukraine and destroyed whole cities and killed tens of thousands, and they weren't trying to attack you, and that's not an unprovoked attack? How many noodles do you need when they lie like this? The Bank of Russia has confidently said that there's no shock to the economy expected by new sanctions, but they also said that about previous sanctions which have shocked the economy. And perhaps my favorite, Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rabikov said that the most acute strategic threat comes from the policies of the U.S. and NATO, which seek to further stoke the conflict in Ukraine and tensions around it, which they deliberately initiated. Yes, it was the U.S. that started this. Ha 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 ha. Not Russia actually spilling over the border with 190,000 troops. So... Mr. Deputy Foreign Minister, you're invited over to dinner, but only if you wear this. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, you can give me a like or a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought. And you can buy me a cup of coffee if you want to support my channel. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching all the way through this video. It's kind of soothing. Relaxing even. Like an avocado rub on your face. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.